So this morning, we are shooting with the 14 to 24, that's 14 to 24. F-mount lens with the F to Z adapter shooting on the Z7. And there's a couple of things that uh, I wanted to talk about. There's a rumoured roadmap of Nikon's lenses out till 2021. So that's uh, obviously we've pretty much finished 2019. We've got 2020 and 2021. Now I think I counted that there are 22 lenses. There will be 22 lenses by the time that's finished. That's very exciting. But there's something else that I've noticed, which is why I think the Z mount is so awesome. And I've been saying this for a long time, and you can see it in this film up here. Right from the start, when it was announced, I said, this mount and what they've done, the engineering they've done, the choices they've made are significant for the success of this mount. I'm going to tell you what we can see in the roadmap that shows this because there's a new paradigm coming. Yes, there is. Don't know if you can hear those sirens in the background, something's happening. Anyway, of course, here I am in one of my favourite sort of places, a laneway. Isn't this good? And uh, just as a reminder, we're shooting on the 14 to 24 and this is at 14. I'm only holding the camera about 40 centimetres from my face. This is what 14 mil looks like, which is very exciting. The 14 mil does to a corner. We can see in both directions, which is awesome. So not only did I want to show you the Z7 filming 4K video, but of course there are stills. So here we are in Capture One, and as we can see over here, We've got the Nikon AFS Nikkor 14 to 24 millimeter 2.8 ED. So that is the latest version of that wide angle 2.8 zoom, part of the Holy Trinity. Of course, sitting on the Nikon Z7 with the version 2 software. So this is the third lens in my set of F mount lenses and how do they work? on the Nikon Zs with the F to Z adapter. So here we are looking at an image I took yesterday, which you can see in the video. If we zoom in, do a little bit of pixel peeping at 100%, we can see that it is looking spectacular. Now we'll just go back over to our editing here. I have increased the structure. I want to turn that down because it creates a bit of false sharpness. Here we have a lens which, which is its architecture is over 10 years old and it is able to create results that are this sharp on at the time the D3 was the highest megapixel the D3 and the D3X were the highest megapixel cameras so that was uh, I think the D3X was a 24 megapixel camera D3 was 12 and we are looking here pixel for pixel and well, that looks sharp to me. So it's just looking fantastic. And again, if what we get by putting one of these old lenses on the Z is that we get stabilization. So not only, not only are we getting the full quality of the lens, and let's just zoom on back out and just show how it's handling looking directly into uh, sun flare. Of course, I love these flare things here. A lot of people don't but I do. And something else to consider is that these lenses are becoming legacy lenses as we speak, as more and more people move to the Z. And so you'll be able to pick them up very affordably and they're damn fine lenses on the Z kit. Let's look at the roadmap. We've had Nikon releasing 1.8 lenses, which have been very, very highly regarded. And then on the roadmap, we're now seeing a lot of 1.2 lenses. What's that all about? 
And there's something else we're seeing on the roadmap, or perhaps we're not seeing it, but we're not seeing it. It's not there on the roadmap. And can you see what's not on the roadmap in the prime lenses? If these rumors are true, none, none of the prime lenses to date are 1.4s. Restaurant, my wife and I went for breakfast and we had some pretty crazy food we can see here. This was called bacon cap. It just means bacon roll and it was amazing. And then there was this beautiful avocado sandwich. But more importantly, I want to talk about the detail that this thing's creating. And it just looks great. I love shooting wide open. So as you can see here, we're shooting at 2.8. Wide open, 1 15th of a second, handheld, still looking great. And as you can see, I've done very little to the file. I've just made it slightly, slightly sharper. But you know what? I'm not sure I like that. So let's just pull. Let's just zero those out. It's still going to look great. It's actually going to look more natural. Yeah, that looks fantastic. I've brought up the shadows a little bit and uh, I've lifted the exposure. That's it. As we can see, we've got these gorgeous colors of the yolk and the orange juice and it all looks magnificent. Pixel for pixel. And where I wanted it to be sharp here, it's sharp. Looks great. Look how good that looks. Yum. So this is, to reiterate, the 14 to 24 looking fantastic on the Nikon Z. And you get the advantage of stabilization and all the other things. This image here, which I absolutely adore. Just verify, we are shooting on the Nikon AFS Nikkor 14 to 24 2.8 ED on the Z7 with firmware version 2.0. Absolutely love this image. If we just look at the detail and the color, and we'll come over in here and have a look at what I've done to it. Almost nothing as usual. This is the Z. This is exposing correctly. This is framing correctly. It's not cropped. We can see I've just lifted the exposure a little bit and lifted the shadows. Have not touched anything else at all. If we get in to 100%, you can just see how sharp, how clear this is all looking. Uh, this is handheld at 1 13th of a second at 2.8. So it's wide open and it's wide open zoomed at 64 ISO at night shooting under the light available. We can even see edge sharpness here, 100%. It's looking fabulous. And this is, as I said before, a lens that was engineered and released over 10 years ago. And look at these lines, quite straight. So fabulous, loving that shot. To show you this one just because it's moody, these lines are straight. Again, we're wide open at 14 mil. Done very little to this shot again. I've just brought the highlights down a little bit just to keep keep the detail in here. The detail was probably still there with it off. Oh, no, there you go, it's, all, it's almost disappeared, but you can make it out a little bit. But this allows us to keep that detail in there and just bringing the shadows up to bring up a little more of these areas and that's it. This shot in particular, we can see here it's all looking straight and sharp. We're at 14 mil, as you can see. And if we go to 100% pixel for pixel, that is sharp. That is looking sharp. This is all lovely and sharp. And look, I am handheld at one quarter of a second. So we are 64 ISO at night, one quarter of a second, wide open 2.8 at 14 mil on the Z7. This is the sort of thing you can do. I wanted to show you this shot because I just, I just, something about the shot I really liked, I think it was the dark and the light. And just showing what the wide angle uh, lens can do in a confined space. And here it is again. So what is it that Nikon have done? What is not on the roadmap? What is missing from the roadmap? Well, what is missing from the roadmap is 1.4 lenses. If this roadmap is real, there is not a single 1.4 lens there. The 1.4 lenses are not there. This is my theory. The new paradigm is because of the new engineering, because of the Z mount, because of what you can do with that much larger and much shorter mount, because of what you can do with it. Basically, my conjecture is near on a 1.8 is becoming a 1.4 from an engineering perspective. And near on, a 1.4 is becoming a 1.2 from an engineering perspective, which means 
you can get something as good as a 1.4 for the price of a 1.8 and you can get something as good as a 1.2 for a 1.4 and I think this is what Nikon's doing they're saying the 1.2 is now a 1.4 if this is true we might not even see any 1.4s yeah I mean basically the word on the street is is the 1.8s are as good as the 1.4s and it's looking like you're going to get a 1.2 for the cost of a 1.4 so everything is good about this mount we are getting in essence in essence what does this mean because that's all a bit confusing it means we get more bang for our buck that is what this all means here we are in the city look at those bloody big buildings up there the rail yards I love a bit of rail work it's always fun it's early in the morning so there's not too much going on yet Nikon are giving us ultimately more bang for our buck by creating these mounts that's my conjecture that's coming out of this and I think it's very exciting I've been frustrated yet again I will say how frustrated I have been and how quick so many players out there have been to write off the Z mount and write off what Nikon have been trying to achieve yet quietly I think they're achieving some pretty amazing things I, I actually think they're carving a very very definitive niche between Sony's epic focus speed really that's about all they have as a great advantage over Nikon and Canon's brand Canon's color science which is really something that you can you can fix in post if you really need to look like Canon which some people were desperate to and the rest of us don't care yeah Nikon you're doing a great job and it's impressive that you're finding your own version of reality in all of this so what do you think I would love to know here we are on the tram tracks I'd love to know what you think about my theory 1.2s and 1.8s means the new 1.4 is a 1.2 we're getting more bang for our buck we're getting better lenses for cheaper prices I think that certainly on paper if those rumored lenses are correct there there isn't a 1.4 coming don't need it anymore they can make a 1.2 as easily as they used to be able to make a 1.4 with the F what do you think is it a good theory and then just to end this video off as you know I'm a massive fan of the Z 50 mil 1.8 S and of course this segues into what I'm saying about the 1.8 lenses being uh, people are saying they're commensurate with 1.4 lenses and I just continue to get these outstanding results including I was out with a great mate of mine and we were at a whiskey bar absolutely super duper low light and if we just look at how at 100% of course we're at 1.8 15th of a second and we're getting these beautiful bokeh balls and just very sharp of course the part that is in focus we're talking 1 15th of a second so if he moved slightly that would change how this looks but it doesn't matter because it's not about perfection it's about the moment it's about the vibe and this is just so beautifully captured here in an image like this so i really love it and we, of course we're in the bar and i love these shots and it doesn't matter that these guys might be slightly soft again we're talking 1 8th of a second wide open 50 mil we still attack sharp i mean check it out there it is at 100 percent looking great but it's about the mood it's about the vibe this is the this is the one i wanted to show you so if we look at this at 100 percent tack sharp these guys are on the move we're doing one eighth of a second these guys they're in action they're telling a story something's going on so we're getting the best of both worlds we've got something sharp and we've got real life happening and we're able to capture in these super low light situations now potentially this image could perhaps be a bit darker just to create a bit more mood but this is the thing with this camera you can you can choose where you want it to be it can be light or it can be a bit darker maybe somewhere in there please tell me in the comments below i'd love to know what you think do you prefer the darker one or the lighter one but this lens this 1.8 lens this affordable very light lens i am finding to be absolutely spectacular based on getting this lens and using it it really did help round out my theory around nikon's 1.8 line basically becoming their 1.4 line and their 1.4 line is now becoming their 1.2 line and this lens is certainly speaking to that and i can't wait to get my hands on the 85 mil 
I'll just show you a couple more because it just continues to blow my mind, the, the sharpness, and that is all I've done. Look at all this beautiful color. You don't need anything else. Outrageous, outrageous. And I love images like this, not just because I love these sort of places, but it's because this texture allows you to see how sharp the lens is. Now we're rendering, we're rendering, we're rendering, we're still rendering, and we've arrived, and look, look at all this detail. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's just, it just blows my mind. Rendering, this, this is the edges. Ridiculous. This is at one thirteenth of a second. Wide open, 1.8. Then I love an image like this. This is in focus. Then we've got this beautiful soft fall off. And then these, these two, this set of two. I think it's a good theory. Love to hear what you think in the comments below. Tell me how you're going with it all. And please, of course, like, share, and uh, I very much f look forward to seeing you next time. All right, take it easy. Got to take some pics.